Hey, you guys, a quick word on the previous story. So two years ago, I joked around on a video saying, hey, haha, -ha, maybe I have ADHD because everybody on TikTok says they have it. Then uh, about a year ago, I found a researcher's um, three part YouTube video about how the brain presents itself when you have ADHD. And I wept because it sounded so much like me. I went to establish a new primary care physician, mentioned it to her. She had a behavioral health person come in, screen me, and I started the process of being screened for ADHD. I had testing last week, Monday, testing last week, Wednesday. It was a lot. And then yesterday I sat on a video call, which is what you saw. I filmed myself on the video call and I received an eight page report with the clinician's findings, as well as spent 40 minutes on the phone explaining to me why she came up with what she came up with. The video you saw before was me literally finding out my results. And because I was recording myself, I just recorded the entire session. So I have the 40 minute video so I can hear what she said to me and I have her report. It turns out I do not meet the clinical diagnostic criteria for measurable ADHD. I am closer for ADD, meaning I don't have the hyperactivity and impulsivity part, but not close enough for it to be diagnosable. I'm clinically, sub, I'm subclinical. However, a bitch is smart. You heard me, and yeah, I curse. Anyway, I am apparently really smart. I have a superior, I'm, so, I'm still in shock, I'm still processing it. I have a superior or very superior, depending on the specific measure, I told you all the numbers, IQ. I am smarter cognitively than the majority of the population in verbal comprehension and working memory. I am 75th and 77th percentile. And in perceptual reasoning, I am 99th percentile. And then the fourth one is processing speed, where I'm just 42nd percentile, meaning I am average in processing speed. So I'm where everybody else is, but according to the clinician, because I'm so far ahead, with the other three measures of IQ, the processing speed will feel like a deficit for me. What? Anywho, I'm still taking it in, <clears throat> processing it slower, <laughs> ironically, which she did talk to me about. And, um, what? Anywho, she broke down for me specifically how having such a high intelligence number could be affecting me in ways that mirror ADHD, as well as could be contributing to my depression. She also gave me some recommendations. One of them she wanted me to lean heavy on is the fact that I'm a caregiver. She was like, you're not giving that enough weight. You're giving it weight, but not enough weight. And she was very complimentary of all of the techniques and tools and systems that I've already come up with. And she was, um, she said I was funny. And she, she in the report, she said I was funny. And she said it was a pleasure watching me do the IQ test. I, what? I'm sharing this because I have always shared my mental health journey with you guys because I'm hoping it's gonna help somebody. Um, let's normalize, let's normalize these kind of things. I've been out here for 15 years talking about my mental health journey and now everybody's on board, but y'all know, the real ones know, I've been out here. So your girl don't have ADHD, okay? Your girl is a very, very smart, sad person with a skewed up self-concept. That's what the clinician told me. And that's why she spent a bunch of time talking to me about my intellectual scores, because she said it could help me with my self-concept. Because um, if you always feel like you're the different one from everyone else, you could believe that something's wrong with you. But what's happening is you are interacting, this is her words, not mine, I'm interacting with people who have average cognitive function. I'm sorry, it's crazy. Anywho, that's it. If you guys have questions or if you've ever been tested this way, let me know. Okay, bye.